All right, folks, welcome back. I'm Jake Ellenbogen. Today we're going to be talking about Matthew Stafford and the quarterback formula that I think has taken over the NFL. Before we dive into it, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Be sure to follow me on all social media at JK Bogan, including Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Kick, and Twitch. And in addition to that, just want to let you guys know that today's sponsor is BetUS. You can get 150% bonus match on your first deposit using BetUS. And you're going to use that promo code YouTube150 to get that. In addition to that, your next two deposits after that will be 125%. So be sure to sign up today, bet responsibly, and use BetUS. Again, YouTube150 is the promo code. Okay, guys, so uh, today I wanted to discuss um, Matthew Stafford. I wanted to discuss uh, kind of the narrative going around. I think a lot of people now want a new quarterback, and I think a lot of what I was saying was a little misconstrued. I've seen it on social media, and I just want to make my point clear here. So first off, um, I'm still in the hotel. I'm still in L.A. This is the last day, uh, last night that I'm spending in, in downtown L.A. Uh, probably will not stay here again. Uh, I've heard that Hermosa Beach is nice and Long Beach and all this. So we're going to look at different spots uh, when I come next year, hopefully with my father. Uh, so anyway, I just wanted to say, though, look, I get it. Watching Lamar Jackson last night and Justin Herbert you get a little jealous. You get jealous of that mobility. You get jealous of the offensive line, whatever, right? But you get a little jealous. Um, this is the formula for winning in the NFL right now. You need a quarterback that either has an elite offensive line or you need a quarterback that has really, really good mobility. And that has been something that I have noticed for quite some time now. Um, but it was really evident, I think, looking at that Rams game. So... I want to start off by saying this, okay? When you look at this season and you look at the the uh, passing, um, you know, the, the, the passer rating, right? You look at the top passer rating, okay? Matthew Stafford is currently tied with Patrick Mahomes for 14th. Now, some people might say, that's not really great. He's outside the top 10. But I'm going to read you to the top 10 here that I uncovered. Uh, Lamar Jackson... Mobile as all hell, scrambling quarterback, also leading the league in passing, good offensive line. He's set, box checked. You have a guy that's mobile. You have a guy that's not only mobile, but he's a threat with his legs. Um, and you have a guy that has a really good offensive line, has a really good left tackle, all of that. Number two is Jared Goff. Uh, Jared Goff is not a sprinter by any stretch, does not have great mobility. However, he has one of the better offensive lines in all football. So box checked. You look at Joe Burrow, number three. Offensive line isn't great, but this guy is really good at making plays on the run. He's very mobile, and he's not afraid to take off and run. He's not a huge threat with his legs, but this guy can run. So Joe Burrow is number three. Number four is Tua Tagovailoa, who is a threat with his legs. The offensive line has been pretty good this year for him. So all around, box is checked everywhere. Tua is at four. Number five is Baker Mayfield. Tampa's actually done a nice job of protecting him, but in addition to that, Baker Mayfield has done a nice job of moving around with his legs, always been a mobile quarterback since his days at Texas, uh, Texas Tech, and of course, when he transferred to Oklahoma. So uh, Baker Mayfield's number five. Number six in passer rating is Jalen Hurts with the Philadelphia Eagles. I don't have to tell you that he is mobile, right? But he also has the best offensive line in all of football. It seems like no matter what happens, a Jason Kelsey leaves, Another guy walks in, and the Eagles have the number one offensive line in football. Jason Peters leaves. They find Jordan Mailata in the seventh round, and they have the best offensive line in football. They have the best right tackle, Lane Johnson. He's been the best for a long time. They're just really good. And by the way, uh, another team's trash is another team's treasure. And I don't even want to say that because the Jets just seem to ruin everything, um, as much as it pains me to say that. Makai Becton went from being a bust and not wanted by the Jets uh, to being a dominant right guard. Uh, so the Eagles have an offensive line. The Eagles have a mobile quarterback in Jalen Hurts. There you go, box checked. Number seven in passer rating in the NFL, Sam Darnold. Now, Vikings offensive line is not horrible, but they did suffer a huge injury in Christian Darrisaw. They went out and immediately traded for Jacksonville Jaguar expiring contract Cam Robinson. Whether they bring him back is a question. However, I will say this, this is still a solid offensive line. They still have guys like Brian O'Neill that can help. That said, even when they can't, 
This is Sam Darnold. This is a guy that has moved around very well since his days at USC. It makes you wonder, is, was it really ever Sam Darnold or was it more so the Jets and the Panthers? Well, I'll tell you right now, Sam Darnold is going to be a free agent after the season, and there's not a ton of quarterback needs in the league, but it's the same thing, just as always. The Jets and the Panthers both need quarterbacks. Okay, uh, box checks there. Number eight is Justin Herbert. Offensive line has been shaky at points, but Justin Herbert's very mobile. He's got a, a great arm, uh, can make plays on the run, can actually take off and run the football. Check, uh, box check there. Number nine, Josh Allen of the Buffalo Bills. Good offensive line, but even better mobile quarterback. Josh Allen is, if you were to make a quarterback in a lab, say what you will about Patrick Mahomes, and Patrick Mahomes might still be the best quarterback in the NFL, but I think Josh Allen is just a better overall version of that. Okay, this is a guy that is built to withstand punishment. He is built like a tight end, but he runs very, very well. So Josh Allen, box check there. Number 10 is Kyler Murray. I don't have to tell you how mobile he is. Offensive line isn't the best, but Kyler Murray is very, very good at running around and making plays happen, playing backyard football. Number 11, Jaden Daniels. Offensive line is not the best, but Jaden Daniels, just like Kyler Murray, can make plays with his legs, can move around, and create you know opportunities. Box checked. Number 12, Kirk Cousins. This is the least mobile quarterback since number two, Jared Goff. Kirk Cousins has no mobility, but Kirk Cousins has a great offensive line. That offensive line in Atlanta is one of the best in the league and has been for quite some time. Lindstrom, of course, you got, you know... Um, Kayla McGarry, and you have Jake Matthews. Um, you have guys there, and that is that's the reality of that. You got the kid from Syracuse, so a lot of good stuff there. Falcons are protecting Kirk Cousins, and that's the only way that's going to work. Number thirteen, Brock Purdy. Talk about a guy that kind of emulates uh, Russell Wilson with the Seahawks. Brock Purdy can make plays with his legs. 49ers offensive line has been better in the past, but they still have the best left tackle in football and Trent Williams, albeit he is hurt. Brock Purdy is number 13. That's really good. Doesn't have the best offensive line in football, but you have that mobility. Number 14, Patrick Mahomes and Matthew Stafford are tied. Mahomes doesn't have the best offensive line, but also doesn't have the worst offensive line either. Mahomes is also very mobile. He's not super, super fast, but he can hurt you with his legs. In addition to that, you have Matthew Stafford, who, in my opinion, is the first quarterback on this list that doesn't check any of the boxes. Is Matthew Stafford mobile here and there? Sure. But when I'm talking about a mobile quarterback, I'm talking about a guy that can be threat with his legs to the point where defenses will actually, you can almost counterpunch a defense using pressure. If the, if the pressure gets to Stafford, he's going to hold on to it and take the sack because he's not trying to force a turnover. And we saw that against the Eagles. Is Stafford a threat to scramble? Well, people brought up how he ran against the Eagles. I think that's the first time he's run all year for a first down. I love Stafford. I think Stafford is special. But if you're going to have a Matthew Stafford, if you're going to have a Kirk Cousins, if you're going to have a guy that's not incredibly mobile like a Jared Goff, you need to have a great offensive line. Do the Rams have that? No, they do not. Now, could that could they have been that had not had it not been for the injuries? Absolutely. But right now, Matthew Stafford simply is doing a lot more than people are giving him credit for. Being 14th is actually a huge flex for Stafford. Being ahead of Jordan Love, who has a great offensive line and is a very mobile quarterback, is insane to me. But number 17 after Jordan Love is Bo Nix. Nix has a solid offensive line they've spent money on. But in addition to that, Bo Nix is mobile. He's very mobile. He's fast. He can make plays with his legs. Number 18 is Aaron Rodgers. Jets really tried to fix that offensive line. I thought they did it the best job they could. I don't think the offensive line is really the issue. Uh, Aaron Rodgers hasn't had the best season, and he comes in at 18, a guy that really just doesn't have the mobility he once did. Number 19 is Geno Smith. A lot of mobility. Offense line has been very, very bad. Uh, however, they did get Abraham Lucas back. That is a good sign for the Seahawks. They seem like a much better team now. 
uh, in Geno Smith can make plays on the run. He can make plays with his legs, obviously won the game against the 49ers, uh, but he can make plays with his arm um, by, you know, manipulating defenses with his legs. So uh, number 20 is Trevor Lawrence, the guy who can take off and run, guy that can make plays on, on the run. C.J. Stroud, same thing. He's not a blazing fast quarterback, but he can move around enough. Um, and the offensive line is good. Uh, Dak Prescott, same thing, mobility. You know, I, I th- anyway, I think that uh, is the case. And then Will Levis can move around. A lot of people compared him to like a you know really poor man's Josh Allen. Um, the Titans spent money on their offensive line as well. Drake May can move around. He has a horrendous offensive line, uh, worse than the league. Um, but he can move around. He can make plays. He can take off and run. Um, there you go. Caleb Williams, not a great offensive line, but can take off and run. Garter Minshew can take off and run. Offensive line is kind of eh. Uh, Daniel Jones can take off and run. Deshaun Watson comes in at 28th, uh, is mobile. So out of the 28, the top 28 passer rating guys, um, with, of course, a minimum of 50% of the minimum dropbacks at 466. Of the 28, there's only three not mobile quarterbacks, Stafford, Goff, and Cousins. I think the least mobile quarterback of those is probably Cousins. Then I'd say Goff. Then I'd say Stafford. I don't think Stafford lacks, like, I don't think he's a statue. I want to make that clear. I don't think Matthew Stafford's a statue, but I do think his lack of mobility is clearly showing. Um, he can make plays like we saw against the Vikings. He can get out and make plays, but it is tough. You can tell he, he's not he's not moving a mile a minute, right? Um, it's tough. And you can tell he's up there in age, and you can also tell that this team doesn't want him to run. So with that said, if that's the case, you can win that way. But the offensive line can't do what it did against the Eagles. So this is what I'm saying. Stafford is still one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL. And if anything, I thought the way he played against the Eagles kind of just showed that. It was a game that really everything went to shit. However, he just continued to rally. He continued to fight. He continued. And he had over 240 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. And he did his damnedest despite the fact he was sacked five times for 45 yards. That's almost half the length of the football field. And these were key and critical downs. You're talking about third down. So the thing is, I think Stafford is much better than given credit for right now. Um, I think a lot of people want him gone. I don't want him gone. But I do think that if the Rams do decide to move on from him or if he decides to move on from the Rams after this year because it's technically a one-year deal uh, with the rework in his contract, um, I think you should be looking at quarterbacks like Sam Darnold, Justin Fields, that are going to be on this open market and guys that are mobile because I do think at some point or another, we watched it with Jared Goff. You know, Sean McVay kind of learns what he wants, um, you know, as time goes on. And I think what he wants, and he might not say it, he might not, you know, show it, uh, but what he really wants, I think, after this, uh, this Stafford era, he's going to want a mobile quarterback. The Rams don't like to stay behind the times. They're not an 80s offense. They don't play defense from the 80s either. This is a defense that they went out, they got Vic Fangio's scheme in their building after he gave them fits. They went out and they started using safeties as linebackers. They started uh, using the star position. They started having multiple, um, kind of like Belichick with the Patriots. And on the offensive side, <clears throat> you know, initially it was just a modified West Coast style offense. And then they started changing things up and they, they made adjustments. Well, I just don't see a team that has made adjustments not making one next year if Stafford is gone. My guess, and I've said this and I feel confident in this, if Stafford is gone next year, they will probably draft a quarterback, but make no mistake about it, I believe Sam Darnold will be a Ram next year. Sam Darnold has the mobility. Uh, People can scoff all they want. He has 22 big-time throws, by the way, which is second in the NFL, okay? Uh, He is 17 turnover-worthy plays. That is a little bit of a problem. He does have a fumbling issue because he takes off and he runs, but 22... Uh, you know, big time throws, those are throws that have a degree of difficulty. Okay. Those are throws uh, as PFF calls them. Uh, essentially, these are, you know, throws that are not easy to make. 
uh, a pass with excellent ball location, timing, generally thrown further downfield and in or uh, in or into tight uh, tighter windows. So um, Sam Darnold, you know, say what you will. Um, he might have Justin Jefferson, but I've been really impressed with what I've seen on film from him. He has a 101 passer rating right now, 101.7. Um, you know, I think really the thing with him is that he is kind of the new age quarterback, you know, mobile can make those tight window throws, um, you know, and, and we shouldn't be surprised. I mean, we saw Geno Smith come from the Jets as well. Um, those same teams that keep getting rid of their quarterbacks too early are still trying to find their quarterback. Sam Darnold is coming from a Kevin O'Connell offense and that offensive coordinator, by the way, the year he was with the Rams, the one year they won the Super Bowl. So this is what I'll say. I want Stafford back. I think they can make a run. I still think they're going to make the playoffs right now. But if next year they move on from Matthew Stafford, I think it's going to be Sam Darnold. I think he is the best fit. And I know it sounds crazy. And some people are like, are you kidding me? Um, I know I've mentioned Daniel Jones as an option. I think Daniel Jones is more so a backup that could be developed into a starter. But I think if they move on from Matthew Stafford, Sam Darnold will be a Ram. Um, because I think you can get Darnold, you can start him for one to two years, whatever, and then you can bring in another guy via the draft, have him sit, have him learn, have him develop. But Darnold, I think that kind of, you know, going from Kyle Shanahan to Kevin O'Connell, then to McVay, I think he would know exactly, you know, what was expected of him. Um, now, there is an understanding here. Darnold is not special like Matthew Stafford. The arm talent is not there on the level of Stafford. He's a good quarterback. He's not an elite quarterback. So, math, you know, you have to understand, like McVay would have to understand, there's something to give here. When the Rams traded away Jared Goff or Matthew Stafford, the give that they were giving away was that flexibility, the long-term flexibility. You know, Jared Goff, is, he was young when they traded him, and they got a guy who was older, and they got a guy that was essentially going to shorten that window but he was a guy that was going to get it done. You knew they were at least going to win one more Super Bowl with him, at least one Super Bowl, and they did. With Darnold, you have to understand, if you're, if you're Sean McVay here, yeah, he fits the new age. He fits the new, the modern quarterback look, but he could regress. This could be a contract year where he, just everything goes right, and it might not work out in L.A., but you have to also understand he's not Stafford. You have to understand that he's going to make more mistakes than Stafford. You have to understand that he's not as talented, so he can't throw those far hash throws that Stafford gets away with because he's just purely insane. Those games that the Rams won this year were a lot of them because of Stafford. Those games you might not win with Sam Darnold. So you have to understand while you're giving up Stafford to get something, you're also going to be giving something up. So if they go that route, that's my thought. I wanted to bring this up because I think it was just very clear. A lot of people were like, I want a mobile quarterback. I want, you know, whoever, right? Whoever in the draft. And uh, like Cam Ward gets brought up a lot. I loved Cam Ward before he even transferred to Miami. So I get it. Um, but I think it's important to understand what you would be giving up, what you're receiving, what you are giving away. And let me just make this very clear. This, and I can't stress this enough, I don't think getting rid of Matthew Stafford is the right answer. And I don't think that the Rams need to rebuild. Uh, I see that a lot. I'm going to have another video on that to kind of break down my thoughts. But as it stands right now, I think the Rams kind of rebuilt on the fly. A lot of returning guys from the, that, starting 2020, uh, that starting 22, 11 on the offense, 11 on the defense, a lot of those guys are returning. They'll be under contract in 2025. This could be the last year to make a run with Stafford. I understand that. But I'm not giving up Stafford to get Darnold. I'm just telling you right now, if the Rams do move on from Sam Bradford, expect Sam Darnold to be under center. And I don't think Sam Darnold would be a bad quarterback uh, you know, with McVay. If, as a matter of fact, if Stafford retired and they got Sam Darnold, I'd be very excited about that. I think he could do some things, but I don't want to see them give up on Stafford, have him play in another uniform, and then move on to Sam Darnold. Uh, Darnold is younger, so I think this is, 
you know, he's a bridge quarterback in a sense, but he's in his prime. He's 27 years old. This would be the time to go out and get him. Um, I, I do think that there's significant interest there. If Stafford leaves, he's going to do everything that, you know, the Rams want him to do. He's thrown 21 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. He's thrown for 2,700 yards, 67.6 completion percentage. And to be honest with you, I thought he looked pretty good at the end of the tail end of that Carolina season, seven touchdowns, three interceptions, 10 big time throws, five turnover worthy plays. Um, and he had a 92.6 passer rating. The 49er game, uh, the 49er team, I mean, there it is. Definitely not going to miss that. Um, the 49er, you know, season, he only started that one game really. So you can't really judge him off that. Um, I do wonder if the 49ers would be interested in bringing him back if, say, Brock Purdy, you know, does anything in the negotiation market, plays hardball or whatever. I'm not saying he will, but I wouldn't rule that out. Um, I also wouldn't be surprised and I wouldn't rule out Minnesota bringing back Sam Darnold. Um, this is a team that has J.J. McCarthy right now who has not played a single snap in the NFL and is coming off a meniscus tear. So he might not be ready for next year, okay? And I don't know, after seeing the way that they've played this year, they're 8-2 and two or 9-2 and two or whatever they are right now, I don't know if I'd be in a hurry to switch over to J.J. McCarthy. This guy's 27 years old. You might have to make a tough decision if it makes sense. Plus, we don't know how far they're going to go. Can the Vikings win the Super Bowl? I don't know about that. But I think they're a team that can, you know, do some damage in the playoffs if given an opportunity. So it's not as simple as moving on from Darnold. But I am saying this. If Darnold's available and Stafford's gone, he is going to be a Ram. I've been wrong before. I've been right before. But I really feel good about this one. So let me know in the comment section what you guys think. I don't think the season's over. This is just me addressing what I keep seeing about how the Rams need to move on from Stafford. I don't necessarily think that. But I do think it's okay to start preparing for the future. If they decide not to move on from Stafford, I don't think his successor's on the roster. I don't care what anyone says. Jimmy Garoppolo is not a new age quarterback. He doesn't fit that style. They need mobility. They need that guy. Whether that's Zach Wilson, Justin Fields, Trey Lance, going out and getting an Anthony Richardson, Will Levis, I don't know. But I think that they really need to consider the fact that the next guy in line in that succession is going to fit in today's style of quarterback. And that modern day style is that mobile quarterback, that guy that is not just, he can make a mobile play here or there, a guy that is always a threat to make plays and work off, uh, off schedule, off script, and create that separation between you and the guy who's coming to sack you. Um, and just enough separation to get that ball off. And that could be the, you know, the, the difference between essentially a sack and a complete pass, an interception and a touchdown. So. That's how I feel. Uh, let me know in the comment section what you guys think. Uh, of course, be sure to check out today's sponsor, BetUS. Link is in the description below. YouTube 150 is your code. Um, but that's going to do it. I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Later, folks. Just want to let you guys know that we are doing all 22 live breakdowns every single week. Rams football related uh, over on kick exclusively that's kick.com slash jk bogan if you want to get in on the action and if you want a little something more than just football i also do gaming streams as well so check that out link is in the description and hope to see you there do you love talking about the rams the nfl or just want to be a part of a community Join my free Discord server today. We're over 800 members. We got 24-7 live chat, a level 3 boosted server, the ability to call into JE Live, playing online games with us on kick streams, toggleable alerts for when I go live on YouTube or kick so you don't miss a live stream, and exclusive giveaways. Click the link in the description, the comments section, or the link that comes up in the video to learn more and join today.